Hey guys, uh, so shooting the WK180, uh, my thoughts on shooting a semi automatic, even with an 18 inch plus barrel, you're not going to get, especially like in a mass produced firearm like that. I'm sure there's other semi automatics that shoot really well, and the WK shoots very well for what it is, um, which is the coolest semi automatic type that we can have legally in Canada and shoot. Bullseye. That are very similar, 55 grain, full metal jacket uh, with a can of lure. And we said, well, let's see if the reloads are better than, and we know that if you're careful with your reloads, you're gonna get better production. But we were also trying to find like, play around with the load a little bit and see what we can get out of it. Uh, so we had three, three, two, two, three, five, five, six type uh, rifles. We had the WK 180 Gen 1, the Gen 2, and then we had one of my favorite rifles to shoot, the Ruger Rancher in 5.56, 16 and a half inch barrel, but man, that thing is accurate. And my brother's got like a, a 3.9 scope on it, so we have a few more zooms than I have on my, I have a Whiskey 3 on my WK, which is not bad, but the rifle that my brother, or the scope that my brother has on his WK is like a fixed four zoom uh, red dot. So we started at the 50, just making sure they were like dialed in. Uh, and I mean, we weren't getting like fantastic uh, results. They were okay. Um, nothing to really tell tale as far as like how much better is it. Cause we did, um, yeah. Uh, we did start at the 50 and then we went out to the uh, 100 so what we have here basically is uh, we actually lucked out and got like a point, point 0.92 with the factory stuff which was okay and then I shot the reload stuff and it actually the center uh, this is with the WK and the center moved up quite a bit and uh, two of the, luckily we had white backing behind this so we could see with the other two rounds, but they went off this target on onto the white paper that was backing. And then I have been messing around with some loads on this stuff I picked up, which is the ELD VT, it's a 62 grain. It's basically a match bullet, but uh, set for varmints and uh, 62 grain. And so I played around with that a little bit and boy did it like that stuff. We got a 0.64. Look at that. Like two touching, one a little low. Okay, so that was with uh, the WKs. And uh, more stuff. Um, my brother with his WK with a fixed four red dot, he got a 0.41 using that 62 grain ELD VT and uh, we were playing around with the Ruger at the same time. Factory, we got a 1.2 inch grouping, which is not bad. And on the reload, we got a 0.77, so half an inch going from the factory load down to the, uh, the reload stuff. And then, this is more reload stuff with the 1K, it was like 1.38, that was with the Gen 1. So it was all pretty well close, but you could see that there was like a 0.4 to 0.5 inch difference between um, the factory and the reload stuff, which is what I would expect, right? Your, your factory ammo, I measured like three casings, uh, had my calipers out there, and there was a slight difference in all of them, whereas mine are all seated to the same depth and the overall length is all the same. So the worst, I think the worst grouping that we got was with mine was the factory ammo of three and a half inches almost. Like that's, that's a big opening. So, and that's only at 50 meters. So wasn't great. Didn't like that stuff all that much. I also did, uh, so we backed up to a hundred meters because if, I mean, if the groupings are gonna be crap, that's where you're really gonna see it. So we have the uh, factory WK180 came in at like 2.74 inches, okay? And then we have the reloads, which came in at 1.49. So we've got almost an inch at 1.2 inches difference between the two. And we have the Ruger Rancher, 
On the reloads, got a .96 on 100 meters, uh, which I'm not surprised. I mean, that thing just shoots so good. And then with the 62 grain ELD VT, we got a .63. Now, um, I was trying a little bit of for low development, just to see if there's something out there that it liked. So I jumped up a little bit here and there as I was going through uh, with that stuff to see like if there was anything that it really liked. And I didn't notice any improvement going from what Hornady recommends in the load book, which is 20.8 grams, uh, grams. I didn't notice any difference. And I jumped up one with the 62, like to go to a 21 uh, gram even on that load. And it really seemed to like that. And that was with like the Hodgson uh, 335. So what does that tell us? Well, what it tells us is that um, reload stuff is better. And a bolt action is better than a semi-automatic in 90% of the cases. If it's a mass-produced uh, firearm, then, I mean, you're not expecting to get... There are some great semi-automatics out there, and I've gotten really good precision from a semi-automatic, but these WK180s, I mean, you could just take them and, like, shake them. So they're, they're, it's not a precise firearm. Uh, and, yeah, so that's what I have for you guys as far as uh, what it liked and what it didn't like. And uh, the results speak for itself. Guys, what did you find? Do you have anything? I'm going to play around a little bit more. I think those bolt actions really like the heavier stuff, especially if you get a, like a one and eight twist uh, barrel or something, really get that thing spinning. Uh, if you've had any success with any particular uh, round for a reload, let me know in the comments because uh, I'm trying to get some precision going with the 223 bolt action. And it would be really nice to save me a little bit of leg work and uh yeah uh, don't forget to click that like subscribe please and uh, we'll see you next time